Recording from the highlands of Zone 4, it's There Can Be Only One. Where's my guilt? Here we are, born to be kings. We're the princes of the And welcome back to the show. This is episode two of the podcast, all about Highlander and everything that entails. I'm Brant. I'm Chris. Top of the morning to you, laddies. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, we both had a lot of sugar, everybody. You'll hear it in the outtakes. Until then, let's just get on with the episode. Yeah, let's do it. I'm staring at a box of Junior Mints, Reese's Pieces, and uh, Whoppers. <laughs> I, I, I'm not, I have Pepsi. Bert, birthday present. Anyway, uh, back to Highlander. Yes. Yes. This this episode, before we get started, is a little bit late scheduling conflicts and other things going on. Um, so we apologize that it's, I, I think it's a week late, right? Yeah, it's only about a week yeah. late. And we yeah. actually wanted to push, we actually were okay with it being pushed a week late because the next issue, I think, is still about three weeks away now. Yeah, it's towards the end of April. I think like April twenty something. Um, so yeah, we get we get plenty of time. So this works out fine. Um, but we are here to talk about Highlander American Dream issue number two. I have the beautiful subscription cover. I don't know what cover you have. <clears throat> I got the cover that was on the book. Oh, you got the regular <clears throat> standard cover. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I didn't pay attention. It, no, I've got the um, I've got the one uh, with uh, them in front of the bridge. Okay, that's it. Would usually it would say like it says like IDW issue two, and then right underneath the line it would say if it was the special cover or the standard right. one. Right, I think it's the standard one. Right. There's nothing there, so yeah, I have, <laughs> mine says sub cover, so mine is the subscription cover. Right, right, right. Okay, so yeah, mine mine's the one in front of the bridge, him and Rachel. Right, so but. Let's let's talk about this book, shall we, Brent? Now, I think both of us we we both read it <clears throat> a mm-hmm. week ago, and um, we kind of both. I mean, we don't obviously we don't want to review the book with each other before we podcast because that would yeah. kind of ruin the show. Right. But I, I think that we fell in the same kind of like we hinted, and I think we kind of hinted towards the same kind of conclusion with this issue. <clears throat> yeah, I think so. But um, it did not end up in our top five on Frontline Live. However, right. however, I will say, before we get started in this book, I did really enjoy this second issue. I thought it was really good. Um, what happens in this issue, and, and anybody who's going to jump in, I'm sorry, I'm still, I'm still off of that Iron Fist annoyance high. Anybody who's going to jump into Highlander issue two and say there's not enough action... You obviously don't know Highlander. Go back and watch like the four movies and the six seasons that were on TV. Because Highlander is all about building up characters. It's not just yeah. mindless sword fighting. And I have right. to give... Um... But before you go into it too far, okay. I just want to mention, just in case this is anybody's first time listening to this podcast or yes. the first time they've heard about this, this particular comic from IDW. It is from IDW Publishing. Mm-hmm. It's written by Brian Ruckley, art by Andrea uh, Muti. Colors by Vladimir Popos and letters by Desi Cienti. Um, so I just want to throw that out there uh, for anyone listening. So. Right, because Highlander, and I'll talk a little bit about this after we finish talking about the book, Highlander was also a dynamite property before yes. IDW. We'll talk about that late, uh, at the end of the show. But right now, <clears throat> I was actually going to say i got to give Ruckley credit. He really did Highlander <clears throat> the way that the show did, and I like that. I like that when I read a book, and I feel immediately like that compare and contrast with Highlander, the series and the movies. Uh, that's a good thing. What mm-hmm. he did here was, yes, there was some action in the book. We did see, you know, we were still in one of the flashbacks. We got two flashbacks, actually, in this book. We were right. still in the flashback <clears throat> during the Civil War. And we find out, and, you know, um, Hook ends up confronting the priest. I forgot his name. Basilic, right? Basilic, thank you. 
And Connor breaks the rule and kind of interferes because uh, it looks like Hook's about to win, and he's not following the rules either. So Connor's like an eye for an eye. No, no pun intended because Hook lost an eye. <clears throat> but <laughs> um, in the end, Basilic ends up staying, but Connor's had enough. He's had enough of the new world. He's like, this is too much for me. I at least understand the madness of the old world. So basically that's him saying I'm going back to Europe. I'm not dealing right. with America. Because this is around the time where America was fairly new. It was the new world. And all hell was breaking loose. Jump back to the present. Have a brief conversation about goths. And I thought that was funny and whatnot. Yeah. And we actually get to see the Watcher. <clears throat> he was in several panels watching mm -hmm. uh, both of the, the Immortals talk. And right. then we go back to 1955. This is now the second uh, flashback. And again, I like this because this is character building not only for Basil but also for Hook <clears throat> and 1955 Connor's back in New York uh, he's with I think her name is Haley is it Haley or is that Rachel <clears throat> I thought it was Rachel Rachel it is Rachel yeah. he's with Rachel uh, Basilic shows up and he talks about Hook being back and um, you know finishing what they started a long time ago and that's why he you know and he was wondering why Connor came back and Connor was mentioning how things were going to hell in Europe so now with <clears throat> with America in the 1950s, things had kind of settled down a lot, so that's why he ended up coming back. But we find out that Hook is now in America, and he's around doing not nice stuff. And that's yeah. kind of where the book <clears throat> that's where the book kind of uh, cuts off for the next Wait, issue. You left out the most important part. I did. They went to a wrestling match. <laughs> they did go to a wrestling match. Yes, that's where Basil and him were talking, and Basil's like, this is fun, and he's like, yeah, it's fun. He's like, I don't see the fun. Yeah, he's like, nobody <laughs> dies in this one. Um, <laughs> That's I, true. I, I felt like they wrote this for us, Chris. Oh, they're, yeah. they're specifically for me. But specifically <laughs> just, for you, but with me in mind. <laughs> no, it was just it was it was kind of neat that they that they threw in wrestling in there. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's pretty much what happens in this issue. You're right. Mm -hmm. Continue. I'm sorry. <clears throat> no, now what I was gonna say is this is classic. Highlander, they're building up now. Either, either this is building up the relationship of Basil and Connor, which will lead into their fight in the present, or in 1955, Hook is going to slip through their fingers again, and now Hook is going to be the guy that they're chasing after in the present in 1985, in their present, which is 1985. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's still unclear where. See, that's the one thing that I give this book a bit of a minus is I don't know who the bad guy is at this point. Now, Basil, obviously, he can't be the bad guy. No. And well, it's Hook, obviously, right? Yeah, but at the same time, if they defeat Hook in 1955, then what was the point of this whole book? Was this just Basil trying to give Connor advice before what happened in the first movie? You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe he showed up in 1955, but he's been, like, terrorizing since... Since then to the 80s? I don't know. It's unclear <coughs> what... I, I know they talked about Hook coming back and everything, but it's unclear what time period he's approaching that lady at the end. Right. Exactly. No, 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 Hook, that was 1955. It was 1955. Yeah, that was 1955. Okay. But, so, I maybe it's it's leading up to, to Kurgan. I don't know. It's It's, like you said, it's unclear... I had forgotten that it was all taking place in 1955, Hook's part. Yeah, that's the only part that I, I kind of was uh, a little disappointed with, is that we don't know who the... If there's a real villain, or if this is really just Basil talking with Connor before his big fight with Kurgan. Yeah. And just to clear it up, it's it's Basilic. V, Basilic? V, <laughs> v. Not B. V. Like in okay. Victor. Victor, okay. Yeah. Because you, you call him like three different names. I just want to be clear who <laughs> we're talking about. Ah, it's the priest. It's, okay, Basilic. Yes, yeah, the priest. Who was uh, a monk. Yeah. Monk, pre yeah, whatever. Um, Before you anyway. go any further, there is a difference between a monk and a priest. I understand that. I'm sorry. I get the. I, I want to mention <laughs> that, that goth thing that you mentioned. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought that was hilarious. Because they're they're like your your classic eighties goths like mohawks and black clothing and white makeup and black lipstick and uh Basilic says, I knew a goth, I'm Amalantha. She lived for fifteen hundred years and never once looked like that. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> I loved it too. I like the the little 
ja- the little pokes with like I know I knew this person. She's about fifteen hundred years old. She's about two thousand yeah. years. Old. You know what I mean? That's awesome. I like that. Right. But no, overall, I agree with you. I think that that just like last issue, this one did a great service to the franchise. It, it I mean, you could obviously tell that Brian Rickley's a fan, and he his pacing is his perfect his. Um, storytelling, just he, he's got the characters down, and I, I felt like it was the same thing. This is a character-driven story with action thrown in, and that's what Highlander always was. But at the same time, like we kind of hinted at, I don't think this issue was quite as good as the previous issue. Yeah, personally, <laughs> I I agree, and that and it was just I wanted a more clear where this story is going. Like, mm-hmm. what the ending's going to be. Is this ending with uh, Vasilik wanting to fight Connor because he's had enough? <coughs> Is this, like, Hook survives 1955 and they're going after Hook together first? And then he gets, like, that warning about Corrigan right before he, you know, before the first movie? Yeah. It's unclear. And that's the only thing that I would like. Hopefully issue three will make it clearer. I think this is a five-issue series, right? I think so, yeah. So we have more we have enough time for that to develop, but still I'd like it a little bit clearer. Yeah, it's the the thing I had a problem with with this issue was that we had you you mentioned this, we had very little time in the present. And I get, you know, Highlanders all all about the flashbacks and you know kind of tying things together and um how things come to a head, you know, in the into the present. Mm-hmm. And I get that, you know, we're a year before the first movie. And that's kind of what this whole series is supposed to be leading up to is that, you know, big confrontation. Right. And, and so I get that we're, we're not going to get a lot there, but at the same time, it felt like in this issue, as opposed to last, that the present scenes, which were only like maybe three pages of the issue, um, were just to facilitate the flashbacks as opposed to the other way around. Um, I, I thought it was, you know, I don't know. It it was a little flip flop for me. It was a little bit of like a chain between, okay, this was 1912, I think it was, and then this is 1950. Now we're in the present. Now we're going right back to 1955. Right. And I, and I get that they're just trying to establish that, that hook is this major baddie and it's not just Kirk and that there are other evils in the world. And that's kind of, that was the theme of this issue and probably the theme of this, uh, of this prequel series, um, which, you know, that's fine. I I understand that just the, the pacing, for this particular issue was a little off for me. And it was like, it's because we spent most of the time in the flashbacks. Um, I'm glad that they wrapped up the civil war scene. So we probably won't need to revisit that now. And now we're in 1955 and we'll, we'll get to see what happens with hook. Uh, But then again, like you said, we come to the present and what are we dealing with? What's going to be the, the confrontation or is it just going to end where the, you know, first movie starts? I think, I think that, if you remember in the first book, Rachel reacted <clears throat> when she saw Vasilik. I think yeah. we're going to be in 1955 for, <clears throat> sorry, for a, a fair portion of the rest of this series, and it's going to oh. explain to us why Rachel acted the way she did when she saw Vasilik. Yeah, that's that's quite possible too. So, which is fine because yeah. <clears throat> maybe he's just there to give Connor the warning that you know, Cargan's coming. Yeah. Yeah, maybe so. Or, you know, maybe maybe it ties into something deeper that we just don't know. I don't know. It's it's going to oh, be interesting right. to see it unfold. Oh yeah. And it, it yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see how they how they come across Hook again and how that goes down. I hope that IDW really considers making this an ongoing and keeping Ruckley as the writer. Yeah. I would like the whole team to stay, but you know, <clears throat> there's always that artist that doesn't want to stick to a book so there's a possibility there i mean ruckley might not want to stick with the book after the mini i hope that he does and i hope that this goes forward because <clears throat> i would love to see ruckley write like duncan and move forward you know in the story a little bit mm-hmm. obviously after the first movie you're not going to want to see you know directly into the first movie you know do after it yeah either after it or somewhere during it that's not you know, directly from the movie, like ties in somehow. Right. Um, exactly. I, I, yeah, I would love to see this continue on. And uh, even though we didn't like this issue as much as the previous one, I again, I still think this is a, a fantastic creative team for this. Yes. I think they they know the characters, they get the franchise, 
and this you know it fits so well into the into the whole Highlander universe. So. Oh, definitely, definitely. I think this book is a. I think it would honestly. I give issue one a five out of five. I would mm. give this a four and a half out of five, just because of the unclear. You know, where is this book? Honest. What is the end game? Who's the <clears throat> who's the bad guy? If there's even if if there's not a bad guy, is there not a bad guy that really the is the point just you know Vasilik showing up to talk with Connor and they're reliving in the past and also <clears throat> less uh, that that very short present scene where it was literally more of a segue from the Civil War back <clears throat> into 1955 that could have been the present day could have been a little bit longer. Yeah, I I do like the the last pages that built up Hook as basically a serial killer. Mm-hmm. I I thought that was a really interesting way to go with that. Um, you know, it's not about the immorals with him. It's it's about just he's he this dude is sick, and I I think that's they are lining him up to be a credible threat for them to face. So it, thinking more about the issue, I I think I was a little bit harder on it when I first read it, just because you know. That first one kind of blew me away, and this one just kind of took a step back. <clears throat> but thinking about it more and more, uh, I, I don't think I'd go as high as you, but I would give it like four and a quarter. Okay, so that's close enough. I mean, <clears throat> yeah. we're only about a quarter behind each other. Yeah. So, again, another solid issue, though. And Absolutely. obviously, over four stars, I mean, we're, we're still enjoying it quite a bit. And, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for issue number four. Uh, three. Yeah. Three. Yeah, I can't wait for it. Uh, I wish it wasn't going to be in another several weeks. <laughs> yeah, that's the one downside. They released the two issues so close to one another, and now we got to wait like that extra little while, and that's a little annoying. Yeah, but I am I'm glad that the uh, this issue was a little later than they had said. If, if it had come out when they when they first um, what do you call it? Um, Announced it or, Solic- or solicited? yeah, solicited it. Um, I think it was like a week or two later than that. So I mean, it was like it was going to be like back to back, like the very next week or like two weeks after the first issue. Oh, that would have uh, been insane. Yeah, yeah. So I'm glad they pushed it back a little bit. Yeah, but I, <clears throat> I think IDW has a real gem here. I think they're testing mm-hmm. the waters with it, just like they did with Back to the Future and Ghostbusters. Yeah, and I again say if they. With the reaction people gave to Back to the Future, if they gave that an ongoing series after people dropped it halfway mm-hmm. through the miniseries, they got to pick up Highlander as a full ongoing. Yeah, I, I think it's clear. I mean, we're both Highlander fans. I think it's clear, at least in my opinion, probably yours as well, that if you're a fan of Highlander and the franchise and like the, the good parts of it, like the TV show and the first movie, you're, you're going to love the series. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I definitely do. As a matter of fact, and I guess this will be the perfect segue, I was actually <clears throat> on in-stock trade, and I, I knew there were Highlander series that came out before this, so I actually looked them up. There are four trade paperbacks out of Dynamite. <clears throat> One book is Strictly Connor, and then the next three, or two of the three, have Connor and Duncan I don't know if the fourth one has just Connor again or if it's just Duncan, but I know two of them have Connor and Duncan. One of them was an ongoing. There was an ongoing that went on for a good two years from Dynamite. <clears throat> another was a mini, and another one, and the other one was a mini. The other I don't know how. Were, hmm? I'm sorry. No. I, I was just going to interject. I don't know how we missed this. I, I honestly didn't even know. I, I was going on there looking to see if they did like the movie adaptions kind of deal. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm surprised we never heard of it. Is like just being as as fans and as comic readers, it's it's funny. I think somehow... I brought it up to you. I saw I had seen it on Amazon, but it wasn't for sale. Like they weren't like at the time they were sold out. So I thought they were just like you know those ones that Dark Horse makes that they just make the trade and they don't make it single issues. Yeah. Yeah, I just meant when they came out, like when they were coming out as ongoing or mini or whatever. Mm, yeah. I'm, I'm surprised we didn't catch wind of it. That's all I was saying. Oh, okay. In that case, I'll let you know when they came out because I, I don't think they came out <clears throat> anytime. Um, let's see. Let's click that one and that one and that 
Nope, and that one, and that one. All four. <clears throat> now, let's see. This one was... Are you serious? You didn't put years on them? <laughs> this one doesn't have... J.T. Krull, <clears throat> Highlander, okay. Way of the Sword. This was a miniseries, and that's strictly uh, Connor. All right. <clears throat> Highlander, The Coldest War, and I believe that's... Yes, that's the ongoing. Zero through five. Uh, of the ongoing, it is again no. I date. can tell you, Way of the Sword was yes. 2007 to 2008. Okay, so next one is Highlander: The Coldest War, that was written by Brandon Jua, Mike Jerwa, Jerwa, Mike Avon, Avon, and Alming. Wow, really? Mm-hmm. And then Brandon Jua. Jerwa, Went all the way through the last two volumes. <clears throat> okay, Brandon Brandon Jerwa used to write um, GI Joe when Devils Do had it. Oh, okay. That's how I know his name. <laughs> <clears throat> and yes, Highlander trade paperback three Armageddon is Duncan picks up uh, after the shocking events of Highlander Endgame. So the last volume is just Duncan. <clears throat> okay. Connor's gone by that one. Yeah. Interesting. So some known writers there. JT Krul used to write Teen Titans. I know, right? Interesting. Yeah. I'll have to check them out. I'm going to try to get a hold of them, too, and we're, we'll talk about them at some point on the show. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Uh, but I think I'll, I have them in a wish list. I'll probably end up getting them sooner rather than later just to have them. I'm still mm-hmm. missing, for those of you keeping up with my collection, I'm still missing the second movie, the anime, I'm not getting the cartoon, and now I'm missing these four trades. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And I still don't have the sword. I have it in a wish list, but I don't have the sword <laughs> yet. Yeah. It's Duncan's, not Connor's. I don't want Connor's sword. <laughs> so eventually, you're going to have the whole Highlander franchise in your in your room. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, most of it. I'm not getting the letter openers, if that's what you mean. I won't get those. Or, or that. <laughs> Remember when we were kids, they had that three-sword collection? That was the regular sword, and then a sword that's like half as long, and then you had the tiny, itty-bitty, like, pocket knife version of it? hmm Yeah, no, I'm not getting that either. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't but, mind having a letter opener. That'd be a cool letter opener. <laughs> oh, it would, but they don't. Good luck finding it. If you find yeah. it, you let me know, and then I'll probably end up getting it and doing unboxings with it. <laughs> okay. But uh, <clears throat> but that was that was way off topic. But yeah, I'll 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 look into those four. But I thought this is a nice modern day comic for Highlander, and I think this get an IDW. If if they look back and see that Dynamite ran it for at least a good <clears throat> two years with Connor alone, with Connor and Duncan, and then right after Endgame with Duncan alone. This gives IDW the opportunity to start with Connor, obviously, again, and then work their way. See, I would like the world to ignore <clears throat> the fifth Highlander movie, like pretend it never happened. I'd like the world to ignore a, a lot <laughs> that happened in you know after the first movie. Yes, that's true. That is true. Uh, but uh, I would like the comics to follow Connor and Duncan around. I mean, even if they interchanged or let's say they did minis with Connor and like an ongoing with Duncan, I'd be okay with that too. I mean, I would like to see Duncan. That's, that's my main point. I don't want to see yeah. just Connor. I mean, if that's what we get, then that's what we get. But it'd be nice to see Duncan as well. <clears throat> oh, I completely agree. I think that TV series changed the franchise. You know, it made Duncan the guy. Yeah, it I, did. You know, even though Connor was still in the in the next couple of movies, it it just for for fans especially, I think it just changed everything, and that's why he transitioned to the movies too. Um, but yeah, I, I think he's I like Connor. Don't get me wrong, but for me for me personally, I think Duncan was the stronger character. Yeah, and I think that's why in the movies they let the sword get passed down to Duncan as opposed to Connor killing Duncan. Mm-hmm. Right. Put it to where. Duncan, because Duncan had given up the sword, they could have easily wrote it that, you know, Duncan's the one that gave up. Right. And they didn't. So. Thankfully. <laughs> oh, yeah, thankfully for sure, because he's still young. I mean, if they really wanted to bring him back for something, they still can. Uh, they probably won't because of that horrible quickening movie, but <laughs> what can you do? 
Except ignore yeah, the fact that sci-fi tried to make a Highlander movie. Yeah. He, he's over 400 years old. He's not young. <clears throat> That's <But> true. <laughs> this is true. Connor's the, the, older. The problem is, at this stage, does he look the same that he did in the TV yeah, series? Because if not... I saw a video of him at the beginning of the year. He looks really good. Oh, okay. Cool. He looks great. That, I forgot he was doing an interview... It was when I was telling you I was watching those interviews with um, <clears throat> Christopher Lambert because they mm-hmm. had approached because he said if he was approached for the new Highlander movie he said he'd do the wave but he would not be in the movie in the movie as a character. I think right. they were talking to Don- to him about it too and about his experience. I don't think they even asked him if he'd be in it. I guess because he kind of had a a decent like you're done, you know. Yeah. It was stupid, but it was a decent you're done. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's. He should be done. If they want to continue Duncan's story or even bring in somebody new, that would be awesome. Oh, bring in Hugh Jackman. Let him be a Highlander. <laughs> that would be interesting. Go for, go from a guy with a healing factor to an immortal. Why not? <laughs> That's funny. It would work. It might. <laughs> Here we are casting the Highlander movie. Here we go. I know. Hugh Jackman. <laughs> Hey, if he could play Van Helsing and pull that shit off, and that that movie was oh, that movie was all different kinds of interesting. I saw that at a drive-in. I liked that movie, but I mean, it wasn't. Every time I would say I liked that movie, people were like, "Are you serious?" <laughs> it's like, it was It was all right. It was all right. It's not the greatest movie in the world, and definitely, you know, it got overshadowed by like Underworld. Yeah. But. I wouldn't make a sequel to it now, but at the same time, I liked Van Helsing. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't great. Exactly. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. It was okay. Yeah. And that's why he should be the Highlander, so that we can give him a great movie to move from Logan on to. But that's just me rambling. Yeah, exactly. So before we ramble too much... Yeah. We should wrap things up, because that's all we got to talk about this episode. This ep- yeah, we were going to do the movie, but we decided, since this is leading up to the first movie, it'd be great to just finish the comic series off, and mm-hmm. then go into the movie the very next cast. Right. Exactly. So we're going to so. just be doing the comics for the next four months, so everybody, these shows will probably be around like 30 to 25 minutes a pop. Yeah, which is fine, unless something else comes up that we want to talk about that ties into it all. Right. Or they announced the movie and or TV series. <laughs> we shall see. Indeed. Or I'll just update you guys on my collection, which I have not updated yet. <laughs> so the next time you're going to hear us is, well, aside from Tuesday night's live show, of course. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'll be on Media Madness this week. I, don't I, know, Chris... I probably won't. Uh, for <clears throat> family reasons, I probably won't. Yeah. So, beyond those, as far as, okay, that's live shows. As far as actual podcasts, though, there will be a new episode of Zone 4 this week where we'll have a special guest, and then Chris will join us for uh, the rest of the show after the interview. Right, right. I should have hit points. See, the thing is now, it's a podcast, like I've been telling everybody, that's, I've got to wait till new stuff comes in, which new stuff is starting to come in now, so I do actually have a few things I could talk about, so that might be coming soon again, finally. Um, hit points, I have a game unlocked, like I said, but I, I ended up, things started happening around the house and I wasn't able to record it, so now I'm looking for the topics at the beginning of the show, or maybe mm-hmm. even Brant will come on and talk for the beginning half of me, I don't know yet, it's, that's up in the air, but Dark Avenger Podcast, I just posted a new episode this past week, the YouTube file, episode 4, which is on my channel right now, as they're called YouTube files, but they are still part of the Zone 4 family, so. Yeah, and speaking of Zone 4... April 3rd is officially the eight-year anniversary of Zone 4. We will be announcing something that's kind of already out there, thanks to one of our cast members kind of jumping the gun a little bit, but it's all right. He got overexcited. He got overexcited. We had to clean it up a little bit. He got a little too excited. We cleaned up after him, but it's okay. Yeah, so there will be an announcement about that, and then we're going to do a full celebration episode towards the end of April. Uh, so that'll be episode 331 of Zone 4, and we'll possibly have another big announcement on that episode and, and like, little things leading up to it. So you want to you keep your eyes peeled to everything Zone 4, and, and of course, everything Zone 4 takes place on Comic Frontline as well. So you'll, you'll hear about it in, like, everything that 
Chris or I do on uh, Comic Frontline. And don't as, forget to check out the Chris and Brand show, which both of us almost forgot. We did Iron Fist all last weekend. Yeah, yeah, four episodes. Uh, I mean, five five episodes, four nights mm-hmm. of uh, Iron Fist. We watched the entire thing, did live commentary. I will warn you, there are times where there's a little bit of dead air. We but that's tried not we're to. Watching, yeah, it's just yeah. hard to do that. It is. It is hard to do that. And then this weekend, another Zone Four thing, one, two, three podcast. Chris and I and a few others will be coming together for a WrestleMania live commentary. It's not determined whether we're going to do the whole show yet, but we will at least be doing something. <laughs> so, right, we will be doing some of the uh, matches, I'm sure. <clears throat> yeah, so just stay tuned to all our social media and on Comic Frontline. Of course, that's where it's going to be. So um, lots of stuff coming up for Chris and I and, and Zone 4 and Comic Frontline. Yep. All right, so until next time, I guess I'll let Brent, um, do you, uh, wait, one, one other thing, Brent, real quick. Okay. For the next comic, what are you hoping? I actually would like to just throw that out there for the next book before we end this. Make it like, a, you got 30 seconds. What are you hoping for in the next book? I'm hoping that we see more of the confrontation between Connor and, and uh, Hook in 1955 and see where that's headed and uh, get a little more um, information on what this current thread is in the present. Same. I feel the same. And I also would like to know, the only thing that I would like added, I mean, I love the writing. I love where it's going, and I like that there's a really strong background building going on um, with the characters that Mm -hmm. we have. I would like to know what Vasilik exactly, what his point in the present is if Hook is gone. I want to know why he's Mm -hmm. there. And it can't just be to warn him about Kurrigan because, I mean, I think Connor already knew before he came around that that, yeah. that um, he was still he was out there somewhere. Right. I agree with that, too. So there you go. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. All right. And one other plug for us before we head out of here. Uh, there's a Kickstarter going on that both of us are involved with. It is mm-hmm. called Indie Comic Cards or Comic Book Cards. I can't remember the Indie actual comic name. Book cards. Yeah. There will be a link in the description below. Um, <clears throat> Chris is Celestial Falcon, my Ember, uh, Lisa's, uh, Alex and Kai from Fairy Stories, and John's, uh, Lord, La- La- excuse me, Lord and Lady Ravenscroft from Pneumatic Cases are all part of this. Uh, it's a, basically a indie card collection. So, uh, like collector's cards. Yep. So if you, if you feel so inclined, go check it out, support it if you can, and, uh, we'll be grateful. Oh yeah. And you get... And anything 50 or more, you get the entire collection of cards. Right. Exactly. There you go. So that's going to wrap it up for this episode of There Can Be Only One. Thank you for joining us. And, of course, if you'd like to get in touch with us, you can email us at zone4podcast at gmail.com. And if you know of any other uh, Highlander materials out there that we have not mentioned, that we've not talked about, that we're not aware of, let us know. And uh, for future topics for the for the show after this comic is wrapped and, you know, beyond the movies, let us know what you think. And uh, you can also leave a comment below. And we will see you next month for a new episode of There Can Be Only One. Good night, everybody. Bye. Recording from the highlands of Zone 4, it's There Can Be Only One. Where's my cute? Good lord. I know you're going to cut that out, so... Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> jerk! God, you're a jerk! <laughs> That's a good thing, too! Okay. <laughs> and welcome back to the show, everybody! <laughs> 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 you can't take away my freedom. <laughs> okay, Mel. <laughs> God. Uh, oh, wait, that's a different franchise. Um. <laughs> oh, God. I swallowed so much saliva. <laughs> <laughs> Gross.
<laughs> this is what boys and girls call an outtake. <laughs> this is what people call 911. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be fine. I'm with yourself. I'm, I'm getting some Pepsi. <laughs> oh boy! <clears throat> Just loosen up this this kilt, and we can start again. <laughs> Hope you got some undies under that kilt. <laughs> nope. I no, and you probably not. You don't even know if I podcast completely naked. God, don't don't put that in my head. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> uh, Gently I, wafting in the breeze. I need a lobotomy now. <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready? I'm ready. I'm waiting oh, for you okay. to start completely over right. again because you're going to cut this whole right. thing out. No, I'm not cutting that out. Well, it's good. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm going to use it for an outtake. Oh, you right, can you want... oh, yeah, yeah. You can go ahead. I'm fine with that. All right. Okay. Here we are, Bond. <laughs> and this is okay. why we don't give Brand anything with a plus anything sugar. No sugar. Sugarless. That's the rest of his life. Yeah. <laughs> 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 this has been a Gonzo Goose production. Bond.